Fred Dibner is now eight weeks into his grand tour of industrial Britain. It's a celebration of the fact that after 27 years, he's just completed his rebuild of the engine, and also of the remarkable achievements of the engineers and industrial workers whose endeavors made it possible to build an engine like this in the first place. He wants to see the sort of place where an engine like this would have been built. Today, the only places where you can get any idea of what was involved in building big steam engines on a large scale is at the works of some of the preserved railways. So Fred is on his way from Ashbourne in Derbyshire to Bridge North in Shropshire, where he's going to have a look at some of the engine building that is going on in the workshops of the Seven Valley Railway. It's a long journey, about 80 miles in total. What you? And Fred's engine isn't the fastest vehicle on the road. So Fred and his team are going to break their journey and have an overnight stop here at the headquarters of the North Staffs and Cheshire Traction Engine Club. All these lads have a pint ready for us. Yeah. Members keep their engines here and generally come at the weekends to work on them or to take them off to rallies. Oh, never do get here. So far, we've seen the traction engine as a mode of transport for getting Fred and his team around the country. But these engines were real workhorses, and in their time, they were put to a whole variety of uses. A traction engine is a strange machine that were developed really from a lot of other engines. It all starts off in the 1840s when the country of all places were all the effort were put in by either animals or the human frame. The men in, in the country, the blacksmiths and, and village mechanics, as you might say, decided that they would make a small locomotive boiler and then stick on top of it a crankshaft and a cylinder with a firewheel and place it on four wooden wheels. So it could be used to drive thrashing machines and big saws and all that sort of stuff. It can be used in quarries to crush stone. It can be used to work portable water pumps. It was like a general doer of all things on working sites. Here at the Traction Engine Club, we get the chance to see the engines at work. Hiya, Fred. Hiya. Phil Jeffs is the chairman of the club. Yeah, yeah, it's a few years now since it I last is. came. And, uh, it is. Things are looking just as nice. It's a lovely place, this, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's you, you could live in here, you know, I could. <laughs> How many living bonds have you got here all together? Oh, I never count. There's probably 15 or 20. Yeah, I bet there is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What, you, what are you doing today, anyway? You've What's just a... arrived in time. Yeah. We're going to pull that dead poplar yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want to use the wood for some yeah. brake blocks for the yeah. engine. Yeah, oh, it's good for that. It's but supposed it to be on fire, does it? That's supposed to be yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah, that's a fight, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to use the yeah. traction engine yeah. to yeah, uh, winch, winch it out. Uh, to pull it down, yeah, yeah. We've got Lady Hamilton to anchor yeah, it, just in yeah. case. Let's hope it comes down as clean as one of your chimneys. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> well, it, it should do. Yeah. I think we should be safe enough here, shouldn't we? I, I hope so. The boss is winding the wiring. So you've got some tension on the yeah, rope anyway. Yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. Oh, I reckon if we went about 15 or 20 foot up the tree, it would have it easy. So you've got a lot of power, that. It, oh, it power when it'll bloody pull something like that apart. Oh, I mean, look at that, look, what it's done to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we go up 15 foot and it fails again, a double purchase, yeah, you know. Got the yeah. Block, yeah. yeah, with a snatch yeah. block but, and a hooped at back at the engine. Somebody's coming with a stacker truck. Yeah. Didn't the steeplejacking used to be Fred's job? Easy way to go up in the world, that is. Ah. 
With the rope fixed higher up the tree, are they going to have any more success getting it down? It's a bit like waiting to see one of Fred's chimneys come down. Right, they're going for a pull. Yes, it's coming. It snapped nice and clean, didn't it? You know, yeah. You want to get the stump out now, don't you? <laughs> Resort to dynamite. <laughs> now it's time to get the tree sawed up for those brake blocks. And at a place like this, of course, the whole operation's going to be done by steam power. It's amazing how many different makers there were of these things. Ransom, Simpson, Jeffries, uh, Savages, Kings Lynn, uh, Fowlers in Leeds, Evelyn and Porter, Greens in Leeds, McLaren's in Leeds. There's literally dozens of these companies, some only in a small way, like a, a, a village agricultural engineer that bought the casting somewhere else and assembled his own thing. And what's Fred trying to get? He's a made of mahogany, you see. It's on a three inches thick, uh, seven inches deep, and uh, 15 inches long, really. Can we remember all that? Bloody hell, wait a minute. Uh, we're no paper, we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three inches. Three inches by seven inches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never call him. We've got our cutting last day. <laughs> we oh, couldn't right. find any paper, so our brake blocks are made of mahogany, you know, and that's yeah. the real McCoy, that's it, this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, so if, if you could be so kind. <laughs> And then we can weave them for season, and then we can throw them away and make nice brand new ones. Right. You won't have to varnish. Yeah, no, I'll buy you a pint. You won't have to varnish these, will you? No, no, no. All right, then we'll do that then. <laughs> and now it's time for an old traction engine rally tradition. Right. We'll put the steps and the stick on, and then we'll declare the bar open. That's it. Oh, that's very good. Yes, excellent. All right. <laughs> I think really bringing this barrel a bit here has uh, all the potential for a good booze up, a steam booze up. The farmers are, the farmers are. Uh. In the olden days, we used to arrive at the steam rally with a, a full barrel of bitter and a load of glasses. And uh, a lot of other people did as well, so it saved you spending your hard-earned cash at the beer tent, which were always inflated prices. It always led to unbelievable drunkenness. Any more for any more? Not done it for a bit. I'm quite looking forward to this afternoon. I'm going to have a talk with my mates over here. Hello, <laughs> chaps. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Fred. Hi, I'm Fred. All right. Ooh. Sit hey, down. That reminds me of my, my early misspent youth. Eh? <laughs> How's your machine going, Colin? Oh, well, we can't wear it out. Eh? We can't wear it can't out. Can't wear it out. <laughs> We're sewing more times than we're standing doing nothing at events this year. Trouble is, if you don't do it, the only thing the younger generation know in relation to a steam engine is Thomas the Tank Engine, isn't it? Yeah. And how many people walk up to you and say, what were the use for, Master? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, look who's here. He's <laughs> trouble. He's, He's trouble. a steam man, aren't you? An oh. up-and-coming steam man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they yeah. tell me you have some of the railways as well. Yes, some Valley Railway. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah well, there in the week. Big outfit, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Very good. Yeah. You have to come along sometime. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll, uh, I think we're going there in a bit. You know. oh, yeah, come yeah we'll call and have a look at you. Yeah. What exactly do you do there? I'm a fitter machinist there. Yeah. yeah well, so. the lids and all that, right? Yeah, all that. Then we go and put them on the engines. Yeah. All the bits we do. Richard Jeffs has grown up with steam and engineering in his blood. He's part of a new generation 
keeping the world of steam alive. Hey, Fred. Uh, we're doing all right. Uh, we're yeah, just talking uh, about the Steam Apprentice Club. Oh, that's a good, a good idea, that, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, it's amazing how many kids there are. You know, somebody mentioned it earlier. Bloody Thomas the Tank Engine, and how does it work and all that jazz, yeah. eh? Well, we've got yeah. uh, nine or seven hundred kids in the Apprentice yeah, Club yeah, now. that's good so, for our movements, isn't it, really? Uh, saying I was just talking to John, I, I joined when I was 12 years old. Yeah. I'm 25 now. Oh old man, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's amazing, I don't realise how old I am, you know. You get blokes come, big as him, and they say, when I was little, you let me have a ride on your, on your steamroller, you yeah. know. Well, that's what starts them off, and then yeah, they come yeah, along. Yeah. And yeah. nowadays, because we've, we've, everything's got to be a bit more controlled and yeah. regulated, we've got yeah. a logbook scheme, so yeah, that youngsters yeah. actually work through yeah. a scheme which takes them yeah, through the that, basics of, good, of working uh, an engine. Yeah. That's yeah. the problem these days, is that kids are, are more interested in PlayStations and, oh, yeah, and yeah. steam engines just seem to take a background. And I'm just glad that the Steam Apprentice yeah. Club is bringing it forward. Yeah. Introducing the younger generation to the steam engine because eventually yeah. I'm going to get old, yeah, yeah. and I want people younger than me following on behind, following on behind yeah. me. Jack's like a, he took to it like a duck to water, really. There, there's some people you, you could train them for 10 years and they still never know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Jack's sort of introduction to steam engines were unavoidable, really. I mean, he arrived into an household full of steam engines. He's always shown a great and dedicated interest in, in the world of steam engines. He's pretty smart, and he started his first job on the Isle of Man Railway Company. <laughs> so, he, you know, he's not half-heartedly going about it. Quite proud of him, really. When I mean, you've heard how dedicated Roger is to it, you know, I want to go, Dad, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. But for Fred, too many of these skills have been lost. Somewhere along the line from the Victorian age, we started to lose it. I think a lot of it's got to do with education. I remember a period when they threw all the lathes out of technical colleges and, and all the woodwork benches and, and everything with theory. A man can learn how to lay bricks now in six months. That's impossible. Can you imagine lads doing catering, cooking? I know everybody wants to be a foid, is it? It's all a bit sad in a way. I can't see the teaching a little lad today at school how to bake a cake is any way to run an industrial empire. And one of the things that's given Fred great satisfaction as he's travelled around making his programmes is the number of young people he's seen learning the skills that are needed to keep steam alive. I'm in charge of the water. Are we ready? And it's not just been the lads. And here at the Traction Engine Club, they need as many young enthusiasts as they can get because there's plenty of work to be done. We've got a low spot in the, yeah. in the ground here. Yeah, it's all yeah. made up ground. Yeah. And it tends to puddle yeah. in the winter and everything. Yeah, so what they're doing is using the club engine, Lady yeah. Hamilton. It's got a scarifier on, yeah. and they're digging the ground up, and we're yeah. going to try and level it out and roll yeah. it back down. A bit more on, uh, yeah. yeah. It's handy, isn't it, when you've got all your own road making gear? Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been restored. Let's use yeah. it for yeah, the purpose yeah. that it was designed, yeah, really. Yeah. If we can't make a road here, then nobody can. Just putting a few roofing tiles in to make up the ground. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good, then, aren't they? The red wind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, my drive were my tarmac bit joins onto the cinders. It keeps bloody disappearing, though. I could do it doing a bit of bit of that myself, like. The proof will be next time it rains. Yeah, yeah, it should be all right, now. I should think so. Yes. And now some more old friends to meet. Hello, Leonard. Hello, Hello. 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 Yeah. I see you still like the old Guinness job. Oh, yes, yes. I've just been to the pub for this. <laughs> You're very fortunate I'm in this club here. With good planning. Yeah. With a pub with that aside at Gates and one of this. <laughs> right, right. And, a, and a motley collection of steam engine owners. That's right, yeah. yes. They'd be brilliant. Uh, yeah. How long's it been going then? This we come 30 years ago. I don't know if it feels a guy today. It was 30 or 40 years. Yeah, was I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? I heard a rumour you. You've, a bit of a problem with old firebox uh, 
Yeah, I'm the fowler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the old story. I've had it, what, 35 years now. Oh. And the old boiler, of course, has to be inspected every 10 years for hydraulic yeah. pressure. I've got it all stripped ready at home for the inspection. He looked at the boiler tubes and he said, oh, he said, I'm afraid uh, the boiler tubes won't change it. But I've been without an engine now for two months. Yeah. And I'm getting a bit sort of... Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, mm. yeah. It's like yeah. going to a steam rally without your engine. <laughs> you feel like to place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so uh, doing the riveting, you know, it's, mm. uh, you know the noise it makes. Yeah. Well, I've had to go next door neighbours, two or three that way. <laughs> Tell them. Two or three that way. Yeah, so at between two o'clock and three o'clock yeah. tomorrow afternoon, I'm riveting again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they all, they all arrange to go out for shopping. <laughs> 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 and this is where Len Crane does all that riveting. The Bratch pumping station is near Wolverhampton, and as well as working on his traction engines here, Len's devoted years of his life to restoring the great triple expansion engines in here that we use for pumping the water. When Fred left the traction engine club the next day, he called in to see how his old mate was getting on with the job. The last time we come, you showed me all the engine and most of it were in bits, bits weren't it? Bits, take you to pieces, and now yes. you've, you've worked out how many years? About six or seven six years. years. Oh, yeah. Well, 91 yeah. we first came yeah. in to start. Yeah, and, and I... you had no boiler, did you? No, no. Yeah. Nothing at all. Yeah, Nothing yeah. At all. And I bought it's... the boiler second hand from the lemonade factory. Yeah. They um, found that it wasn't big enough, the capacity yeah. of the steam. Yeah. And they had to buy a bigger, bigger, bigger boiler. One. So you got and I bought that second hand, yeah. <laughs> But the yeah. engines inside them are a credit to them, man. They're beautiful. Yeah. You could use them in any sort of big line of pictures, like the Titanic job. When I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. we used to be in the field next door, and we built our first three and a half and five inch gauge miniature yeah. railway. Yeah. And I cycled to there mm. from West Bromwich. From all right? Yeah, from yeah. West Bromwich. And we built the railway there. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday evening, when we shut down, I used to walk along the canal mm -hmm. to here, knock the door, and the yeah. chief engineer then, Mr. Hunt used to let us come in and watch the engines go in. Oh, that's not right. Never thinking when I was coming up to 70, I'd have the keys. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've done things like that, you know. know. Yeah, when you're little and, yeah. uh, and you, yeah. you're looking with your mouth open at it all, and then, well, you know, later on in your life, that's right. you, you're actually in charge. <laughs> I've not done the engines like my traction engines and yeah. models before, mm -hmm. but never done one that big. Yeah. I don't think I shall do one any bigger now. No, you know, no, 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 no. You're getting a bit long in, so it's probably bigger yeah. than that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go down into the uh, pumping yeah. department. Yes. Go oh, in here, Fred. Oh, this is where it all goes on. Very really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Get on your ring light, mm. of course. Mm. If you imagine if it was a pumping water, yeah. mm. there'd be a hell of a throb in here now. Oh, wow. In yeah. fact, this is what they used to hear yeah. Yeah. over the road in the houses yeah. I mentioned before. I think the flywheels as well, you see, I mean, they're mm. hell, hell of a thing, aren't they? Yeah. The crankshaft, mm. of course, that was made in Liverpool. Mm. And stamped on it yeah. is, uh, is the year yeah. it was, it was forged, yeah, 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 manufactured, yeah. which was um, 18... Mm. What was it, uh, 1892, mm. I think, it's all the three. Yeah, just think of bottom of the sea, there'll be a lot of things like that. Right? Oh, yeah, lovely the engine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Not shiny yeah. like this. Now it's time for the Seven Valley Railway. And Fred's still finding it a bit of a novelty to be driving his own engine. It's quite strange, really, because never having owned a traction engine of my own, even though I've driven quite a few dozen of different makes, you go to steam doors and they all, you know, oh, you want to go on my engine and all that. Like. And of course, it's quite nice when you get a chance to drive your own. After 20 odd years of struggling and restoration to get it into the state that I wanted it, like a new one, as you might say. His team have now reached Bridge North in Shropshire. The Seven Valley Railway runs trains between here and Kidderminster in Worcestershire. The line was built in the mid 1850s. 
Here there's an engine repair shed which gives us an idea of what a loco works would have been like back in the age of steam railways. Fred met John Robinson, the production manager, to have a look round. Bit outsized for this line. Yeah. Which is uh, built I've been, in the I've been before as a spectator line. Right, yeah. It yeah. oh, reminds me of when I was a kid down here. Yeah. Plenty of smoke and so the smell of sulphur. Yeah. yeah. This is a nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. He's uh, he's on test for the vehicle yeah. acceptance body there, a rescue. Yeah. This engine over here, the, yeah. that's an 8F. There was 840 of them on VR. Yeah. This yeah. one was out in uh, the Second World War. He was out in Persia and Egypt. Mm. Let's have a look on board then. Aye. <laughs> now then. Oh, there there you are. Are. This is Roy. He's just been yeah. getting it ready. Right. Even warming it up. Warming it up, yep. yeah. Yeah. Fire all those somewhere, didn't it? Big lumps, then, yeah. aren't they? Right. Yeah, that's nice stuff. Yeah, I call it, when it's good, I call it radioactive cold. You know, when you, you get some, but it's a waste of space, isn't it? You know, as soon as you start taking any steam off, it just disappears. I mean, pipe works nice and simple on here, isn't it? There's not too much of it, like injectors and brake job. I can pick it straight up, then, yeah, what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, yeah. if you go from a steam engine from the LMS, you go on a Western one, you can still pick, pick up what's on it, even though yeah. they're from different companies, you can actually yeah. Yeah. pick it out on there. When the wars came, the, the government and that were quite surprised at the ability of the workshops, mm, of what the railways, of what they could actually do. Yeah. And of yeah. course they started to turn them into working for the war effort. Yeah, yeah. They got tremendous, yeah. the railway factories, mm. really were. I don't think we can make a bean can now. Can yeah, well, you, you, you get in near to point no, where uh, uh, you can pick a book up about boiler making and it's written by an academic who's never mended a boiler in them, I made one. That's right. And it and it says and the rivets are closed. Yes. It doesn't tell you how they're closed. closed. Them, and there's no way you're going to learn that by reading the book. Mm. You like to go and have a look at the workshops and in the Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, right. Come on, follow you, John. Okay, right. All right. Magic. Take care as you come down. From being a good shed, we gutted it. Yeah, yeah, I know and, what you mean. Yeah, uh, all, the all the machines from elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. put them in. Mm. And I've been a stack of them in my time. Yeah. There you oh, go. Yeah. I, I oh, think you know this fella. Uh, oh, he's, a, he's one of your attraction engine, engine man. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, How are you doing, mate? All right. Oh, what are you doing now? Um, yeah. Just removing the old studs. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, it's brass down, isn't it? Oh, mm. yeah. These little holes, I mean, I'm looking at them, I thought it's a good little hole, but it isn't, is it? No, it's drain It's hole. a drain hole, isn't it, from the inside of this receiver, like? Yeah. When it's all coming out, condensing, it's and it runs out. Yeah. It's a good idea, though, isn't it? I, oh, I think yeah. I'll do that to my tractor. Because, it, it, you know, it's always full of bloody water that splashes about all over the place. Yeah. George was the guy who taught Graham. Yeah. Well, he was our boiler foreman, yeah. all about yeah. the boilers from yeah. British Railways. Because oh, yeah. he was the yeah. chief London Midland Region yeah. inspector. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, you can come up and look around the shed uh, yeah. and all and see what you do. I'll leave you with Graham yeah, Fred, yeah. and I'll yeah, see you yeah. later. Yeah, all right, okay, John. Then. Yeah, see all you, mate. Right, see this you is, um, yeah, you, I can see you're putting uh, bits in on the flange a bit, aren't you? Aye, you can see the one that came out. It's a bit worn, so we... Put yeah, some inserts how, in. How have you got that out of there with a, with a cutter? Yes, a plasma cutter. Yeah. Oh, this is um, <clears throat> a copper tube like we've uh, just finished, Fred. Yeah. You see the two new pieces on the flanges. Eh? That's right, and the, yeah. between the yeah. tube holes and yeah, screw yeah. the plates. Yeah. It's ready for going in, isn't it? Like in, a yeah. brand new bit. Yeah. And this bit here is um, same treatment, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, same treatment. Yeah, so the, the, the copper tube plate. Yeah. Mm. Really, for anybody who doesn't know anything about locomotive boilers, this is a wonderful example of, of explaining it nice and simple, you know. Like this big gap round here is, is full of water. And the stairs to these bolts that hold the plates together, if they weren't there and you lit the fire, it would no doubt blow up. And of course the fire is in this, this chamber. Really we're looking where all the pipes will be and all the tubes that you know, are necessary for its, its running. You can see there's been a lot of work done in this thing in years gone by, can't oh, yes. you? Because yeah. the, even the, the, bike, the fire hole plate's been screwed in, hasn't it? Yeah. Originally, it will be riveted. Originally riveted. Yeah. As it's been repaired. Yeah. Uh, it's 
various railway works. They mm. take the rivets out and put yeah, screw. copper, copper yeah. screws in. Yeah. Mm. Now, when it was originally built, it, mm. it was all model stage. Yeah, as they've filled, they've put only copper ones in. Yes, as they've gone up a size. Yeah, good me heck. Yeah. Oh, and then we all know what sort of a struggle that would be. <laughs> Fred spent so long in the boiler shop that by the time he had left, the last train had departed, so there was no time for any footplate rides here. It was time to move on. From Bridge North, he had to get to the Black Country Museum in Dudley to find out how the chains that are used for steering his engine were made. Chains made in the black country were renowned for their quality all over the world. At the end of the 19th century, 90% of all the chain workshops in England and Wales were here in the black country. Most of them were very small, in the backyards of the workers' houses. They've managed to find their way here even though you won't find the black country marked on any map. Let's go and have a look at this pit. Yeah, all right, yeah. It's an industrial area to the west of Birmingham that was originally based on coal mining and iron working. It got its name in the 19th century when thousands of chimneys filled the air with smoke and mining turned the ground inside out, creating huge expanses of industrial dereliction. It's not as nice looking as your head gears. No, I didn't, is it? It's not for any shape <laughs> sections on. This cage is new, you know, since we last came. Hey, look at this, a, a draining trough for yeah. minding water, eh? Up comes the thing in a bob, boodoosh, and mm -hmm. down the trough into the river. Mm. Yeah, it's all interesting stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look at all these wheels. I don't think there's anything connected. And there's always going to be an engine to have a look at. Yeah. That's only a little one, isn't it? Yeah, nice though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, got the drum outside, hasn't it? In, in another shed. Did you say that at George's lane pit was yeah, similar size to Yeah, exactly the same as this, yeah. Mm. Nice engine. What would that spring be for? Ah, oh, well, there's a point. Big spring, I know, for it start it, this lever here, yeah. this, that one, yeah. when you lift it up, it lifts the... Lift it off yeah, that thing. Yeah, and the eccentric rod came along and worked a, a, a way shaft across here. 1860s on this engine, you can tell. Yeah. Mm, musical, isn't it? Look at that. An electric storm lamp. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the indicator board there, isn't it? We, we might make one of them, won't we? Mm. They're going to park the engine up and stay around here tonight, ready for their visit to the chain maker tomorrow. As well as the chain making, Fred is going to one of the places where all the copper for an engine like this was mined and he's going to find out how the copper was spun and made into parts for the engine. 